Hello and welcome everyone to this audio programming video in which you watch me implement a new feature for my plugin Nell. It's kind of a meta feature though. Instead of being a direct feature for the plugin, it is more like a debugging tool that helps me figure out what's wrong with the other features that I create. You will see what I mean when I now enable this plugin. You see it producing a waveform. This waveform is actually a sine wave, but you can only see it if you drag out the loop a little bit more. And whenever the loop repeats, it will go back to the start point in a smooth way. Because the new LFO that I'm currently implementing is fully procedural, which means that each phase of the project corresponds to a certain phase of the waveform for a given frequency, no matter if you are setting it in a free rate or tempo sync. In order to achieve that, I'm using crossfades, but that's not what this video is about. When you are a developer and you have to develop a feature that has something to do with the transport information, like BPM, project position, time and samples, you name it. You usually have to do that in the door itself, because the standalone version of a Juice plugin does not have any playhead information, so you cannot debug that. However, it's kind of annoying to always reload the plugin in the DOM, because first of all you have to deactivate the plugin here. Then you have to go into your IDE of choice. Then you have to make your changes and you have to hit build again and wait. If the build was successful, you can go back into the door and you can activate the plugin again. Boom, and there it is. But this has multiple problems. First of all, if the bug that you currently try to debug is one that is being triggered on initialization, you cannot attach a debugger in time. Because in order to attach a debug, you have to use this window, which you get with CTL Alt P. And then you have to select the correct process. And I was recently told that I can also just use the select window feature, but that only works if the window was already opened. So it will not work now. So as you can see, you have to open the plugin GUI for this to be a thing for some reason. And then you can use select window, boom. And then you still have to press attach. It's not automatically attached just because you clicked on it for some reason. So yeah, Visual Studio moment. Now I have attached the debugger, but if the bug had already happened now, then this would be much too slow. And also it's kind of annoying in general, you know, having to attach a debugger all the time. An alternative for that might be that you're not using Bitwig, but Cubase or Reaper or any other door that you can use directly as a debugger. But there you also have the problem that you cannot define the state in which you load the plugin. For example, in a real life door context, it might be that you enable the plugin while there is playback. But it might also be that you enable the plugin while there is no playback. And yeah, what if the bug only happens in one of these states? What if this state is the playback state? There is no door that I know of that you can open and it immediately plays back the project without you hitting space. It's always a little bit annoying to figure out these kind of test cases. So what could be a good solution for that? Well, what I wanted to be able to is just select the standalone plugin project and then hit the debugger, you know, just so that I don't have to use the door at all. And as you can already see, this works. This also currently uses the LFO modulator and there is some moment where this modulator bounces back to a place where it was before, just as it did in the door where I had this loop range. And you can already see it in the background. There is something with loop ranges in my code as well. Can you see where this is going? I hope you do. Because I made a class or a struct called standalone playhead, which is basically my debugging tool for these kind of moments. What it does is, it is basically just a position info, which is the deprecated current position info class from Juice, but it's very useful for this. So even though it's deprecated, they should definitely not get rid of it completely. It is useful because for my standalone playhead, I just 
100% know that it has all the values so they don't need to be optional. All this optional stuff is just, uh, you can completely scrap that when you have the standalone playhead in your project because you can just make it be replaced with the actual playhead whenever there is an actual playhead automatically and then you can just be sure that there is always a value, no matter the host. Anyway, now I will show you how it works. So as you can see, it has a default BPM that you can change by just typing in a different value here. It has a loop start and the loop end and the loop range. So bar one and bar five is currently the loop. And of course there has to be a little preprocessor defined for whether the loop should be used at all or not. So if this is false, then it will just disregard the loop range and will just only work with BPM and PPQ and stuff like that. As you can see now, it is just a normal LFO that plays back at this frequency, 159 microhertz. So let's enable this again and I will show you how it works. So in the constructor, I'm just giving this position info a bunch of values like the default BPM, time stick, numerator, denumerator. That's something that I have never used so far. So I just gave it the default values for time and sample zero, second zero, PPQ zero. So I'm currently just giving it these values so that it always starts at the beginning of a project. That can be very useful if the things that you use your project position info for has some latency compensation stuff in it, where stuff can be below zero because if that is problematic then it will definitely show immediately when the stuff starts at zero but you can also just type in other values here if you want to however you have to make sure that time and samples time and seconds and ppq position always match and for that i have this free function called set playhead where you can just give it a time and samples and then it will figure out the other things automatically. So that can be very useful. I also have a free function for moving the playhead, which is useful if you just want it to move on for a given num samples, but without changing any of its properties or something like that. I decided that the default value of is playing is true because that is a case that can be true in a door but it's usually not easy to reach in a debug context, but yeah, it can be changed anytime if needed. Prepare function, just capturing these values. The actual processing function, which has to be called once per block, it moves the playhead further. And then if debug loop is enabled, then if the PPQ position is over the loop end, then you go back with the loop range and calculate new values for time samples and seconds. I hope that these calculations are correct. I was given them by GitHub Copilot and I didn't test them, but so far, they seem correct, so yeah, seems good. This is a good discussion point, by the way. People lately have been discussing AI tools a lot and they say it could be that the things that they are telling you are wrong and then you are left with wrong code and you wouldn't even notice but I say no because I would notice if this was wrong because then it would introduce bugs. Of course sometimes there can be subtle bugs but you know when you're working very extensively with a debug tool like this then at some point you would notice that in certain moments it is just not correct. If I notice that something about this is not correct the next few days while working with this then obviously I will just change it so not, not a problem. Uh, that's why I think that the people are very silly who always discuss this like it was the biggest problem ever it is definitely not but i think it would make sense to make this a while loop even though currently it is not possible that this has to be triggered more than once per block but it might be that i extend the functionality of this class at some point where the playhead can flip back to the loop from a much later position or something like that might be I don't know. You probably want to see how I'm using this object so that you can, you know, also write something like that in your own code base. As you probably know, this plugin has a lot of modulators. So that's why there is a modulator header that has a modulator class which contains subclasses of all the modulators. And of course the modulator and in its process block method, there is a standalone playhead object. And as you can see, if this build is a standalone build, then I'm just moving the playhead forward with the processing function and else I'm replacing whatever is in this with whatever is in the actual playhead of the host and then I pass on this information to these classes and that's also why this whole optional stuff is just completely silly to me and I would urge the juice team to get rid of that again because obviously yeah it is correct that some hosts do not support some of these types of information but 
Realistically, you do want to have default values for this kind of stuff because it just speeds up your workflow super hard and it's better to have default values anyway so that you can make an application that behaves the same in different kinds of hosts even if some of the information is missing. So, you know, when the information should be there anyway at some point, then why not giving it in the first place and forcing people to use thousands of if statements for no reason. That makes no sense except for weird nerds who are definitely very detached from the practical reality of plugins. That's why I would say please roll that back. That was not good. That looks good for a programmer but it was not good. Okay now let's go on. So I'm passing on this playhead info to my LFO and this is my LFO header where I'm currently developing my new LFO which should have just more stability, no bugs anymore. It's not done yet but yeah currently I am working on this class which is a class that holds an array of these things which are LFOs that crossfade when the speed changes and this thing should crossfade whenever the playhead jumps uh, as you can see like I'm stacking these different crossfading things on top of each other for the different reasons to crossfade. I should make a separate video about that because it's very interesting actually and super helpful in making code that is readable and where you can clearly see which part of the code is for which job. That's something that I didn't like in my initial implementation of the LFO but yeah let's not talk about that now it's it would take too long but yeah you can see the transport information just goes in here there is no if statements about whether the transport information exists because that has already been settled before very readable code i'm just using the information that is given and you definitely always know some information is there and the information is valid like here clearly is playing yeah then do stuff and maybe set a different playhead. This is not the same playhead. This is a dummy playhead that I use for this algorithm. And of course, this dummy playhead also uses the free functions that are in this standalone playhead header because another advantage of having a whole header file dedicated to debugging playheads is that you can also just extend the functionality of playheads in general with it and give yourself nice little extra functions for making it easier to understand how to manipulate playheads to do the things that you want to do. Yeah, now I just have to find out what's going wrong here, which is currently that when you are starting the project and there is a sudden jump to the start of the waveform and you can see that in the standalone version of my plugin very well because it has a visualizer, so I don't need the door for that. So you can see it starts here and that would appear as a discontinuity in sound because the dry signal is always here. So it would actually make sense if the plug-in also moved smoothly when there is a change in whether the transport information is currently playing or not. We could just enhance the functionality of our standalone playheads here. Define debug is playing true. Static const expr double is playing length. Let's just say that this describes the length in beats and that it always takes like, like 3.5 bars to start or stop playback. Okay, that, that sounds reasonable. Now we just need to have a value for that. If debug is playing, is playing phase. Okay, is playing phase starting at zero. So we are moving on the playhead. Is playing phase must also move on. Now that would be in seconds. I want this to be in PPQ. Now I have to check how the formula was for uh, PPQ, which is time in seconds times BPM times invert of 60. So num samples times sample rate inf would be time in seconds. Then times, um, ah yeah, pause info BPM 60 in. There was a perfect moment to show that GitHub Copilot sometimes just knows what you want to do. Great. So now the next reasonable step would be to find out in which phase of is playing phase we are currently. I have an idea how I wanna go about that. I will just start by debugging that first. So is playing phase divided by is playing length and then rounded to integer. I think that should give me values where you can see it increment exactly at the speed of this length in beats. This 
It's rather slow, rather, rather slow. Definitely too slow for 142 BPM. Oh, right. That's because it's 3.5 times slower than 142 BPM. Yeah, that makes sense. So the calculation seems to be correct. And then it also needs to be casted to int cause. If I'm now moduling this with two and calling that the state, then this should result in a value that is either zero or one. Perfect. This could be the thing that now triggers everything else here. So let's put this actually after this part of the code. Now I can say if state is zero, then post info is playing is false and post info is looping is also false. And obviously post info is recording is also false. I would say the other values, like the positional values, I could imagine uh, in some debug cases, it would make sense if they snap back to some sort of default value because a lot of DOS just do that. But it could also make sense if they just stay at the point where they are, which is probably what I do now. And now else, let me write it like this. Now I have it separated. So if this macro exists, then all this and else just this, because then I can be a little more specific in this else, because obviously I have to set these to true again now. Not all of them actually, just the first one. Because I haven't worked with is looping and is recording yet, especially because I haven't ever seen is looping being true when debugging for real. Like, I don't know if that's a mistake in Bitwig or something, but this never seems to be true, even if I am actually looping, which is also why I write this whole logic right now about, you know, the position estimate and stuff, just because the is looping thing is not working correctly. And now that should work. We can easily test that now by going to the end of this method and just say pause info ppq position. Now we can just see how the ppq position behaves. While we are at it, we can just pause info is playing. We can cast that to an integer so that we can also see the state of is playing. Okay, let's go. Yeah, cool. Now we can clearly see how the playback starts and stops and it starts with not playing. Let's add another const explorer here. Is playing default to true? Let's test that. Is playing default should be true. Okay, so we're definitely starting with is playing, but the reason why it still didn't play, even though I already had true there before, was because the first value that you get from state is definitely zero. So that means put away the modulo here and instead write it here so that I can further tweak the state plus equal is playing default true in which case one else zero. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's go. Yeah. Now we have it starting with playback. That's cool. Now we have a lot more different debug states that we can use. By the way, if anyone is wondering if you can just download this whole thing uh, so that you don't have to write it yourself, that is a little bit problematic because that for that I would have to push the repository now. And since it's in a very unstable state, I will not do that now, but it will be pushed once I have figured out more of the bugs of my plugin then you can just copy the code. Until then, you just have to follow my logic and then write it yourself. I hope that's not too annoying. Okay, so we said is playing default to false. And yeah, we've already tested that, so we don't have to do that again. And we can now focus on the code of the LFO again. The only thing that I wanna say is that I wouldn't even be so far yet if I hadn't written my standalone playhead. And my standalone playhead really Im improves my workflow. So it is just something that I want everyone to know about. It's a very recommendable thing to write.